Hey, Devon, how's it going? Thank you for having me. I'm electrically well. And you? I'm awesome. I think you are so awesome. So thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for coming on in your home city of Miami. And I love your glasses. And you. I would love to know what this is around your head. Yeah, so the glasses, let's start, the, well, let's start with the pyramid. <laughs> it's a pyramid, and it's made of, it's from Dr. Fred Bell, who is, was a NASA scholar. And these are the parameters of Giza. Mm -hmm. and they are organ infused organ infused so they're not just gold plated before they go through an electrolysis process so they get blasted with positive and negative ions all at the same time so they have that zero point essence to it and then they get gold plated wow. yeah so <laughs> funny thing enough when i went to giza the pyramid when, as as i got closer my head started buzzing and then I thought I was going crazy. Then I placed it on other people in the bus and random people, and, and they were saying the same thing. And, and that deals with what I call scalar, what they call scalar energy as well, because it was the same dimensions of the Giza. So the closer you got, it starts resonating back and forth. And also brain scientists have found when you wear particular pyramids, you are also more in a theta brainwave state as well. So it helps wow. with that. And in my opinion as well, if the brain is a receiver, then it helps with structured thoughts, etc. That is the coolest thing ever. And I feel like such good vibes and good energy off of you. Where did you get that if somebody wants to get one? Uh, you can find it on my website under the biohacking page. And there's like a discount for Paradigm products. Awesome. And I'll link all that down below for you guys. And do you wear it all the time? Like Most of the time, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, you're such a cool guy. So five years breatharian. I would love to start out with you letting us know what is a breatharian technically. And what's the difference between breatharian and liquidarian? Because there's a liquidarian term too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the difference is, I guess what you call breatharian, that comes from the word Anita. And Anita means to have little or nothing at all. And the main foundation of Anita is the meditation aspect. So it's the foundation. It's not just focusing on food, etc., but it's also utilizing when you're mostly empty, your meditation practices, your energy cultivation practices, your energy focus practices, and help build up the quote unquote energy body, or I like to say the electrical body in that sense and utilize that as you go. To me, a breath Aaron is someone who puts the breath first, <laughs> right? So you can be a stress Aaron. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like to put their stresses first. Wow, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that to me is what a breath Aaron is. Okay. It's not just about the food aspect, but it's also about utilizing energy practices, especially when you're at empty states, like when you first wake up. Most people do that anyway. So a lot of people are breathing, right? We're all breath air in to a certain degree, but our focus is not there first as a majority. Yeah. And I read something this morning randomly and it said when just when we breathe, I think it said we breathe out like 70% toxins or something like that. I don't know if that's true. Oh, that is true. It is? <laughs> it wow. Because if it, it correlates with the aspect that 70% of the blood is pumped by what? Your lungs, not your heart. Mm -hmm. so with that being said most of the functionality of your blood is being dictated by the way you breathe mm -hmm. and the structure of your blood is also being dictated by the way you breathe as well because as the air comes in i say the the frequency of how you're breathing comes in and then the lungs read it and then pumps it out into the blood yeah wow interesting breathing is so important it's you've opened super me important. up to this and i feel like so I live back in Toronto. For those of us who live in Toronto, busy cities, New York, whatever, I feel like I don't take to proper time to breathe properly. And I'm kind of constantly in a state of like shallow, shallow breathing and go, go, go. Do you think that can be dangerous for us? And how do you think it could impact my life to calm down and start breathing better? So I like to say the, the external world will rule the way you breathe until you rule the way you breathe. So with that being said, of course, it is, it's super important. And we utilize breath 24-7, 365, um, even when it comes to certain addictions like either smoking or food addictions, etc. It's not that the person is addicted just to the substance, but they're also addicted to the way the breathing is induced mm. when they take the substance. So if you look at smoking, for instance, right, what does it also signify? You know, the lungs in 
Chinese medicine and African medicine is known for grief when there's either someone is trying to block off emotions via smoking or et cetera via the mouth. It's affecting your breath and breath correlates with the way you digest and it also correlates with how the stomach is being processed as well in terms of food and information. So the, the stomach is also the second brain, as they say, right? It's also made of the white, the same white matter also in the first brain that we always look at. So with that being said, <laughs> it is super important to focus on your breath and no matter what type of lifestyle you live. Wow, you were full of so many aha moments. I love it. And great points. And why, why do you do full breatharian? Like why no solid food? And how has this impacted your life? Like what benefits and why do you do this? Why do you enjoy living like this? Like to some people, it's really extreme, right? Why do you keyword, love this? Keyword enjoy. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't do this if I wasn't having fun. Yeah. So that's the, that's a point of what I call alchemy breathwork that I pioneered and focused on was use, utilizing the breath in everyday life and having fun with the breath. Because if it's not fun, it feels mundane, boring, and it's not going to last long, longevity. So in, in my situation, I got to the point when, when I left my Sifu in California, and then he went back to China at that point too. When I came back, I was surrounded by friends who would have different social habits, etc. And then I got back to smoking again. Yeah. And when I started smoking at that time, I realized how much energy it took <laughs> to release everything I quote unquote smoked. Wow. And that, you know, after that, that helped me go back to the path of uh, less solids because the more you breathe and the more you can feel your body, you, you realize how much energy it takes to digest solids. Yeah. Like even I notice if I do a lot of juice fasting and I notice like the difference in how I feel if I'm doing a juice fast. And just how much more clear headed I feel and how much better I sleep. It's such a huge difference. I never feel better in my life than on a juice fast. So I can only imagine how you feel. You must feel so clear headed. Like when I'm on a juice fast, I feel like I'm in a state of meditation all the time. Like my mind is so quiet. Is that how you feel? Do you feel just so much more connected? And how has it changed your life spiritually? Keyword connected. Yes. Yeah. And how has it changed my life spiritually? Well, it's inner alchemy at the same time, and that inner alchemy give, brings you on a journey because that's what it is. It, it really is a meditative journey because you're taking in the same type of texture over and over. As I say, let thy food be thy medicine, med I, meditation. So that correlates with the everyday occurrence. And what does that sound like? Meditation, where you're having that single focus on that one thing, the body is represented of the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So when the body is constantly reading a particular texture, you know, it's focusing and then readjusting, focusing and then readjusting and saying that, hey, now we have like a more of a liquid flow state. <laughs> yeah. And then the body doesn't have to overwork itself in terms of breaking down in term versus solids. Yeah, well, what if some people say, well, you need the solids, you need the food. Do you feel like you're getting adequate nutrition? Have you checked your blood work and do you feel healthy? Yeah, so last year my family forced me to check my blood work. Yeah, I was so curious. I was the like, healthiest one in the family. Stop, yeah, no way. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, so, you know, oxygen, electrons, you know, that's also part of food. Also, music is part of food. Yeah. Our conversation is part of food. Like I said, the body is a subconscious mind and 80% of communication is nonverbal. That also correlates with environmental communication in terms of our environment that we're in. So our body is picking up on certain factors and our blood is also listening and then reacting, making adjustments. So the less you're in fight or flight situations or environments, the more you're allowing the body to be in more parasympathetic healing and absorbing the proper nutrients it needs not just from air but also the biophotons that's also within the air and now that we know that they're coming out with there's no such thing as space but there's something called quantum foam there's also energy within that in and out i call it the the black air because when i did 
that's how I came up with the name, the Black Airbender. Yeah. Uh, when I did 30 days dry, no food, no water wow. in, in a dark room in my basement, there came a point in time when I inhaled, I could see the light coming towards me. When I exhale, I could also see the light expanding. So in my mind, I'm like, we're all literally breathing black air. It's not just wow. empty, empty space. We're all breathing in information. Yeah. So the way you breathe in is the frequency the body is reading. And the longer the exhale is, the more you're embodying that frequency. Wow. And do you think it's important? Okay, in a second, I want to talk about this 30 days dry. But do you think it's important too, like the people we surround ourselves with? Are you really careful who's in your inner circle? And is your inner circle filled with breatharians too? Or do you hang out with some people who eat everything? Or are they vegans? Or Yeah, I, I don't have a particular... I, I let, as I say, the Tao or the way. I just, I, I realize how powerful my, magne my magnetism is in terms of a person. It is. I have so, to, like, you're very I, magnetic. <laughs> you're one of the most magnetic guests I've ever had. Yeah, I, I don't, I have a very small circle. I don't go out too much or hang out too much in, in terms of friends, etc. So I'm very aware of the places that I go to and the intention behind it. So... I've evolved into that point and being on that path, it led to more quality people in yeah, my life. Yeah, for sure. Naturally. Naturally. Yeah. So I don't have to force anything or put a filter or guard up or anything. Things just naturally come to me. And if things are aligned, then they're aligned. And yeah, uh, the more you also get out of judgment, judgment is also a powerful energy. People also need to realize as well, because when you're judging others, you're somewhat judging yourself in a sense too, just realize that everyone is on their own journey. And I like to say no one is better than anyone. Everyone's breathing at different frequencies mm -hmm. and living life the way they need to at that moment in time. Yeah, so true. And I had, I think when I had Ralph Smart on, I don't know if you know him, and Elizabeth Lambert, and they both said judging lowers our vibration, lowers you, our frequency. You know frequency. why? <laughs> because when you're judging others and you're sending out that frequency to others, they're taking up on it, whether they realize or not at, at a subconscious point. And your mirror neurons is also going to be reading their body language, etc. So it's like yeah. you're, you're speaking to a mirror. Yeah, in a sense. so true. And do you think like if you're around like negative, toxic people just by chance sometime, sometimes do you feel like your vibe is just so high, like you don't absorb that energy? Just you're like on your own frequency or sometimes would it affect you a little bit too? Oh, yeah, of course it affects. The point is, how are you going to transmute that affection? Yeah. You know, let's say I'm in front of a toxic person. So I would use something like mental breath work where I'm not spiritually bypassing I'm taking the reality for what it is mm -hmm. and using that, all that information and reverbalizing it, harmonizing with it, using breath. So for instance, let's say someone goes in front of someone and just smacks them and they're rude. Like as I'm seeing this, I'm acknowledging, sure, yes, it's happening. And with every breath as I inhale right now, I'm inhaling the complete opposite energy of what I'm seeing in this exact moment in time. And as I exhale, I'm exhaling more life into that complete opposite energy. Wow. And as I'm doing it, one, I'm not lying to myself because I can feel the breath. Second, when every time you tell the truth, your neuropathic ways connect at a deeper level. So that's sending signal to your subconscious mind as well. That is... 80% of what we're living in today. Even scientists will say that we live in 80% of the subconscious. Yeah. It, isn't that crazy? And how, are there, is there anything you do to work on your subconscious? Like, you know, they say you can listen to affirmations when you're sleeping. I feel like you don't even need to. You're just <laughs> elevated above all the rest of us. But for me, I sometimes listen to stuff when I sleep. Do you think any of that stuff's effective? Or Yeah. I'm breathing on different frequencies. I don't want to say elevated. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah just, we're all just breathing on different frequencies. One of them is subliminal breathwork music, which is really powerful because it trains while you're sleeping to breathe in a more harmonious way via only nose as well. So wow. that's the type of music I create as well and focus on. And what made me even utilize it, because I had it in my back pocket for years and then a friend, his uncle was on the respirator. So I sent him like, hey, just play this instead of having the TV on in the hospital like they always do. Yeah. Just play it continuously and let's see what happens hopefully this helped 
And within two weeks, when he got off the respirator, he could do the exact same breathing pattern he was listening to. Wow. That I that I was playing. Wow, unbelievable. Going back to mirror neurons. Yeah. <laughs> I also learned this from the CIA too, that they have something called mirror breathing, where let's say someone comes up to you and they're frantic and you can tell they're all over the place, yeah. right? So while they're exhaling, you're exhaling, well, sorry, while they're talking, you're exhaling with them. And then whenever they inhale, you inhale with them. And you do that for a couple of times. But the main point is you want to get to the point where your exhale is way longer to the point where you notice them inhaling, inhaling at particular points and you're still exhaling. And then you'll start to see them start to calm down, mellow out, and they'll slow their, their talking down. Wow, interesting. You're full of facts. Well, I feel calm just in your presence, I have to say. And I had a pretty crazy morning at my Airbnb. Something happened. <laughs> Somebody was trying to get in the unit and it kind of shook me up a bit. And I feel so calm around you. You really calm me down. So for those of us who don't want to be breatharian or, and we just live that fast paced life, is there some techniques? Like I know you posted on your Instagram something really good the other day and you gave a list of techniques even for somebody who's trying to calm down and sleep. Like maybe some techniques for people who want to wind down or de-stress. I know you said just breathing through your nose right. and counting your breaths. Counting your breaths. And so. I've done those the last couple of days. It's <laughs> helped a lot. Yeah. So I want to let this known. Alchemy breath work is for everyone, not just for breath errands. That's the point of alchemy because I can go into any lifestyle and bring the power of breath. And we focus on everyday life, not just a sit down session or focus on that one hour part of the day, but making life the meditation because yeah. life really is the meditation. Yeah, right. Right. So something really powerful you can do when going to bed is counting your breaths, like you said before, like I, like I posted. One is before counting your breaths is setting the intention that every breath is bringing me deeper, deeper rest, deeper healing, and bringing me more connected to myself. So you set that intention because that's very powerful. Breathing only with the nose back and forth as you're seeing that in your mind's eye. And then literally counting the inhale one, the exhale two, inhale three, and then you're counting your breaths, so forth and so on until you fall asleep and letting the breath guide the way. Setting the intention with the breath is the most underrated thing when it comes to breathing practices in general. Wow. And what would you say is the number one reason you choose to live this lifestyle? Because again, I'm having fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> having fun with the breath. Yeah. Amazing. And what does a day look like in your life as a breatharian? A day in the life as a, as a pioneer, engineer, is waking up, setting intention with the breath, acknowledging gratitude. That's the number one thing and some scalar movement getting some sun in the eye is a big is a big thing at least 10 minutes and then uh, do some infrared lighting if it's really dark out and then i'll answer some emails then hit the sauna yeah <laughs> and then do my one-on-one -on -one clients for the rest of the rest of the rising yeah sounds pretty awesome and if you live so yeah i live in toronto if you lived in Toronto, New York, I don't think I asked you this already. I think I did before we got on. But do you think you would still do this lifestyle if you were in North America? And Because I noticed even when I came into Miami, getting into Florida, I noticed a difference in my breathing that it was better. I noticed that when I come to warm climates, all of a sudden, like it just feels better on my body yeah. and more natural, <laughs> right? Because we are tropical creatures, mm -hmm. I do believe. So if you were in North America, is this something you would do? Do you know any breatharians there? And what do you think if somebody wanted to try this there? Yeah, so I can only speak for myself, but I used to live in New Jersey. So first thing, let's start with the winter time. So winter time, I would take advantage of the winter time. I would actually, first thing I wake up, I would actually go outside, walk around with no shirt. <laughs> yeah, And wow. walk around my place back and forth and then come back inside, take a hot shower and then go back outside again. And it'll be like a, a cold immersion type of thing and going back and forth. So that will get the lymph going. And another cool thing when it comes to North, North America in general, the North side, is mountain regions. There's a lot of mountains and places that I took for granted uh, leaving New Jersey and coming back. I'm like, wow, there's so many places to yeah. explore and go to these places. There's a lot of preserve uh, reservations out in especially new jersey and even new york 
they, that's a train away, actually, if you really want to go in nature. Same thing that they do in Japan and stuff like that when the doctors pre- prescribe nature, nature walks and give the people time off. Mm-hmm. So, you know, nature is abundant. America is super big. The mm-hmm. cities are small, <laughs> but there are so many places to take advantage of and immerse yourself in ion therapy, which is coming from nature. Mm -hmm. So I took advantage when I lived in Jersey to go to these places. And waterfalls, if you can get next to moving water, listen to moving water as much as possible. Another cool thing is there's many parks, right? There's even parks. If you can't go to a reserve, there's so many parks out there that you can take advantage of. And another thing, I guess North is also more condensed and city, city like, right? Mm-hmm. So taking advantage of utilizing EMF protection. That's another yeah. big thing. Because it does affect us, it right? It does affect all the way in the Amazon. And do you think all the Wi-Fi does and stuff too? Like we have to be careful to turn it like in our house, like turn it off before we turn it sleep. turn it off, or also get scalar equipment as well. Which is that is, like what that thing is you have that gun thing? Yeah, I actually okay. I actually brought it. No way! <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. what does that do? So what that does? I see this on your Instagram, and I'm like, what is this? Well, I want to ask you, too, where you think you... Well, let's look at this first. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. What is this? Did you design this? Is this? Yes, I designed this. So the previous... What? Is the what is this, Devon? <laughs> so this is a scalar plasma projector. What does it do? Uh, well, it's mimicking what our ancient ancestors did. When you look at ancient India, the pyramids, they... To me, I call them scalar temples because some of them were also designed in frequencies so yeah our ancestors knew the power of frequencies and intentional building in that uh, in frequency that is everything right vibration exactly. and frequency that's what we're living yeah in. but before western science caught up and said that everything is not truly a solid everything is moving molecularly you know even before the first religion there was something called animism where our ancestors maybe most likely had the sight and less veil where they could actually see a, a rock actually moving and they can see the vibrations coming from the rock. So they came up with the aspect like, hey, everything is alive. Everything is moving. Animism. Everything animates. (laughs) So what this does, it projects scalar and plasma. Plasma is also another word for scalar. And what scalar is, it's longitude waves where if I can throw a rock in the ocean, you'll see disruption. If I can throw a rock, be a sound it'll disrupt the sound if i throw a rock into the light it'll disrupt the light waves right but Mm -hmm. with scalar if i throw a rock into a scalar field or scalar wave it won't disrupt the wave it'll keep the integrity strong and it also strengthens hydrogen bonds as well which is also within the dna wow wow so that so you designed this yeah so uh, sometimes you put you like use it on people no am i wrong i use it on people does it hurt oh like if you, you did tell it on me. me right now would it hurt i'm no. not gonna lie i'm scared it looks like it so, hurts it will it no, hurt me at all no because i'm a wuss with pain like, <laughs> no even well, when if i go you have to a dentist pain. for a cleaning i'm like uh <laughs> if you have pain this is great for pain yeah you promise it won't hurt i promise it won't hurt so what is this gonna do to me it's going to send more ele- electro electrons to the body more plasma because the body's made up of plasma yeah so well let's raise those vibes <laughs> wow that is so cool wow <laughs> so people can get one of these on your website yeah people can get so them. what does that go for one of those uh this is 300 but they don't yeah. just get this they also get scalar movement and breath because these devices are to amplify what we are yeah they're not just standalone devices we should use them in correlation with our qigong practices our yoga practices because nowadays you have you have people doing yoga in the worst lighting that is not healthy for the body right on plastic mats Mm -hmm. that's not healthy for the body 
Mm -hmm. right? If we look way back in ancient times, everything is now watered down in terms of knowledge. Even yoga itself, when you, let's go even down to the Indian temples. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to go to Africa, but we look in the Indian temples, there are ancient temples. If you look up, it literally looks like an arc reactor. Mm -hmm. So once upon a time, who knows, what if all these temples, not just India, but in China, that's also made of the same geometry. Mm -hmm. They were oscillating back and forth. The air was more electric. The air was more filled with plasma and negative ions in the air. Versus today, if you actually read the air quality around 5G towers, it actually sucks and dissipates oxygen, which is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously shifting the air that we breathe. So this helps as well, too, with the air that you breathe as well. This is cool. <laughs> this is really cool, I got to say. Okay, yeah. well, I'm interested to know, where do you think you would be right now if you didn't take this path? Mm, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. But it, it, took, it, took, it took seeing the ignorance in my arrogance to shift over to this lifestyle because it took losing everything to that business partner out in Cali 11 years ago to meet my mentor. So, <laughs> and I remember selling my laptop for gas money. Yeah. And there was this movie, Doctor Strange, and it's one of my favorite movies. And it's a point where she's like, let go. Yeah. Like, uh, where he, he's on the chair and he's like, ancient one, teach me. And she's like, all right, no. <laughs> yeah. So, because you didn't let go to begin with and just trust. So And that can be hard, though, when we're going through, like, the hardest times of our lives. Do you have any tips to do that? And now looking back, are you glad the hard times happened? Cause yeah, because yeah. with my mentor, the, the first he had me fast for the first time two weeks on liquids. And then we did our first session. And I got so deep in the session that he was like, you want to get initiated? And I got initiated into what they call the bigu. bigu. Mm hmm and bigu is a Taoist energy cultivation practice where you don't need quote unquote solid foods etc and doing that the first thing that popped in my mind was how was i breathing all those times leading down to the downward spiral to mm -hmm. that with that business partner mm -hmm. and i was breathing shallow when we ha would have business meetings and <gasps> wow. when stress factors came how i would react to that wow. so all those things in my mind started Literally, my life just flashed before my eyes Wow! through that. Wow. So our breathing, it, we're also inhaling the moment, but we're also imprinting the future at the same time. And the breath is the bridge to all dimensions of reality. And I also proved that with Pathwave's brain readings that I can actually induce gamma at will with connecting with my breath and colors as well. Interesting. Fascinating. So breathing, it's not just inhale, exhale, but... It is a conscious entity. It's a living entity. And it's also representing the power of contrast with the inhale and exhale. Mm -hmm. And contrast is literally within everything. Within everything. And it goes back to what I was saying before of how even with quantum foam, how scientists can observe things coming in and out of existence simultaneously. What does that sound? Mm -hmm. Sound like mm -hmm. the inhale, the exhale. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're sleeping you're breathing, right? In your dreams, you're still breathing. Your body is at another dimension of energy and it's still breathing. Mm -hmm. So breath represents contrast and we can utilize breath to bring a stressful lifestyle and bridge that more into a stress-less lifestyle. Yeah, and do you do courses for people online? With yeah. This? Okay, so I'll and, link And we have a certification below. coming up in August. Okay, well. cool. I'll link everything down below. But crazy. Okay, I'd love to talk a little bit about the dry fast you did for 30 days, you said? Yeah. So 30 days, no solid, no liquid? No liquid. I know a lot of dark. people would think, I would think you can only go like three days dry. No. So... <laughs> Do pe people need to be careful doing that? Oh, right? yeah. Like they, the regular they, person yeah. needs to be careful. So not don't medical go advice. out and do that, you guys. No. Not go see your doctor. But whatever. But crazy. So how was that experience? How did that change you? Was it hard at first? The first few days? Did you think? Oh, so I was on liquids for over a year at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was easy going, going into that state. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. would be way easier then. And I know being a breatharian, some people might think, like I said before, you're not getting the nutrients you need or whatever. And so what do you take in in a day? You do take in a little bit of liquids, right? Every day or no? Yeah, every yeah. day, yeah. Okay. So is it coconut water? What type of liquids do you prefer? 
I prefer coconut water. Right now, I'm in the Blue Lotus phase. So, Blue Lotus lemonade, oh. activated charcoal, scalar water. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Scalar water. So, scalar water, how I make scalar water is using distilled water. Yeah. And placing it on the scalar and program a whole bunch of different frequencies into it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now we're seeing that it's not it's not actually structured water. It's programmed sca scalar water. So it's programmed distilled water. Wow. So it's it's increasing and keeping the integrity of the hydrogen bonds while giving direction for the distilled water in terms of frequencies when you either ingest it or putting it on the skin. Okay. And you feel energized on this lifestyle? You don't, because I know some people might think, oh, you must feel tired or whatever, no. right? <laughs> no. And how is your sleep? I know even as a raw vegan, I notice my sleep is so much better. Or when I do a cleanse, like juicing or only eating watermelons, I feel so awake. So do you feel like on this lifestyle, you need less sleep and you feel like super awake when you wake up? So there's a difference between sleep and rest. Mm -hmm, okay. So I've, I've evolved into rest where rest falls into the category of conscious meditation. So a great easy tip is when you're resting or quote unquote sleeping, turning sleep into rest is closing the circuit. Literally keeping your hands together when you rest. I like to be in fetal position mm -hmm. sometimes because that's really how when, uh, when we're babies, that's literally how we are. And when you're like that, if you can be as still as long as possible, you'll start to feel the pulsations coming from the hand and then resonating on the whole body. And now you're, re you're getting to understand the power of quote unquote rest and what rest is really doing versus unconscious sleep. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. So with that, with practice, you can now either have a direction of where you want to go in terms of the consciousness and body, whether you want to be more in your body or you want to go to astral or you want to go to lucid dreaming. And folk in, you have the option at that point, the more you're in tune and connected with the electrical pulses in the body. Nutrition to me is electricity. So it's not just food aspect, but it's also air quality. It's also breathing in more electrons and transmuting those electrons for the cells to use and absorb. Because when the body is less than 20, uh, 20 volts in the body, when it falls down in that range, there, you're more prone to chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And another key factor that they found was less oxygen intake. Mm -hmm. So oxygen itself is also electric. Yeah, absolutely. And have you ever had any diseases or been sick at all on this lifestyle? No, for the last 10 years, no. And did you ever get sick prior with your old lifestyles? Oh, yeah. 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 Panic attacks. I used to have those. Pain in the chest. I think that was part of definitely the, the panic attacks. Yeah. Because in a few days, then it would happen. Those are and terrifying. You, they, they are. They're literally like you're, you're literally you going to die. die. Yeah. I remember I used to have those all the time. I have never had one since I've been raw vegan. They were terrifying. If, okay, so if somebody wanted to try this lifestyle, do you have any advice or is there anything you've learned doing this? Looking back, you would do different if you were to start over today? I would focus on the breath. Mm -hmm. The breath. I don't believe in particular protocols in mm -hmm. terms of like, hey, you do this, you do some type of breath air and initiation, and then now you're on that path wave. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't believe in any of that because... The breath is your ultimate guide. Yeah. And the more you can breathe, the more you can be real with yourself because you can feel. And the more you feel, you know your limits. Well, not your limits, but you know, you know where you need to stop, when you need to stop, when you need to do it, when you need to intake more if you really need it. And the breath also helps you with the hydration factor. If you're breathing more efficiently, you're also breathing in more cellular hydration for the connective overall aspect of consciousness and body awareness. Mm -hmm. So when those are going, it's up to you at that point. Are you doing this for ego? Yeah. Or are you doing this because it really feels good? Yeah, exactly. Good point. Well said. Okay. Well, there was something else I wanted to ask you, and I don't know if this is too much information. I feel like you're an open book, though, because I feel like some people will ask how your bowels have been over five years with no solid food. Still liquids. If I if I do any type of like soups, then of course. Yeah. 
And what was the last solid food meal you ate? Do you remember? It was an acai bowl. Oh, it was? Yeah. No way. Awesome. Those are good. Okay. And you do some urine therapy, right? Yeah. Shivambu or plasma filtrate. That's okay. The so that's the proper where, medical term. That's the proper. So where you literally <laughs> drink your own urine? Literally or drink or place it on the skin. I mean, oh, no I mainly place it on the skin. Wow. Yeah. See, and it's also a form of stem cell therapy because it is mainly stem cells. No way. And there's a lot of studies or proof that it's beneficial and it's healing, right? A lot, I would a lot think of PhD studies on it now. No and way. they're still trying to find, they're still finding out more, more stuff to urine. And I'm all about trying for yourself. So you might hear a study, but I think like try it on yourself. So you do notice benefits from that? Oh, big time. Yeah. Wow, because I would think like our urine is flushing out bacteria and like getting out things. So I would just think it's waste and we wouldn't want to use it. Why do you think that we want to use it for th for beneficial reasons? I'm well, curious. Which, which, which body of system is known for flushing out toxins? Mm -hmm. The lymphatic, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you see the, the kidneys on there? I mean, yeah, the kidneys. Yeah. That's where the urine is produced, right? Yeah, true. The kidneys are not part of that. True. I never thought about it like that. Wow, good point. Wow. Well, this has been awesome. Is there anything else you feel called to talk about that I've missed or that you think our viewers would wonder? Like anything you feel people maybe ask you all the time that are common questions or just anything that comes to mind that you'd want to discuss and get out there? Sound, the power of sound. Sound is also food. Yeah. You know? Wow. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Sound is also food because it penetrates the body. And sound was a powerful staple into staying on this lifestyle too, because in in our sessions or our events, we utilize breath and sound. So when you're doing the breathing and your body is more open, you absorb what the sound is doing and having a deeper experience to what the sound is doing to your cells. And we've seen how that you can use sound to affect cancer cells, etc. No way. Wow, and that's fascinating. I know that, I keep saying wow, but <laughs> I just think it's so awesome. And that's, that, and, cool. that's what, and that's what we use with Scalar as well in terms of the Scalar tools because it helps create that environment. It, think of it as a Wi-Fi, but a healthy type of Wi-Fi and a harmonizing environment. And it's really mimicking of who knows what if our ancestors were utilizing it in that sense. So if we're living in a, like a soundful environment that's maybe stressful, lots of construction, or you hear people fighting in the condos around you, like that can affect us negatively, I guess. I Big time. Yeah. Wow. I never, anything else that comes to mind you want to talk about? Because you think... <laughs> So awesome. Yeah. Well, the, the power of Scalar is, is something so tangible to people. And I feel like it would also help someone on this lifestyle as well because okay. it gives you more access and it's harmonizing with nature. There's yeah. also the opposite side of Scalar in terms of weather modification and, and stuff like that okay. in a harmful way. But we can utilize it like our ancestors did in a more harmonious way to create more healing environments, especially whatever type of diet you're on to help with cellular regeneration. And we can even take a picture of someone and place it on the scaler and run remote frequencies and they can feel it. Wow. So some people said it must be placebo. Then we went up another notch and now we're taking pictures of farms. Yeah. And then placing on the scaler, the soil is richer. Things are quote unquote growing out of season. And these are farms. I did one all the way in Japan wow. where there's no towers, etc. Yeah. And now things are still flourishing even more. Wow. So this, people also, one thing I want to, lastly, I want to share with, this is one big earth. Mm -hmm. So sure, there may be EMF towers in, here in one city, but even if you go onto the outskirts, all the way in the Amazon where none of that is there, right? Mm -hmm. We're still finding forever chemicals. Wow. In my opinion, I don't think the soil is remotely as powerful as it once was in ancient times at all, because the food of today is not the food of yesterday, obviously, right? So if one part is affecting from the city all the way to the Amazon, it only show, it shows you how powerful the connection to Earth really is and how it sends out that network, that feed. So it's up to us and our responsibility to build more harmonizing technology to aid in the Earth's healing and mm. our healing as well, like we once did. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think you'll do this lifestyle forever? At this point, yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering, do you have kids or no? No. No, no I didn't think yet. so. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been really awesome. I've loved talking to you today. I think you have such great energy. And I've learned a lot. And you are very magnetic. I would say I've interviewed Eli. He's a fruitarian. I've interviewed quite a few fruitarians on this channel. But he had great energy too. And I feel like you, you, both of you come to mind as just amazing, calming, 
magnetic energy. And I just think you're such a cool person, such an awesome person. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm thank sure my viewers, yeah, absolutely loved you. And I will link everything down below. So everybody go follow Devon. He's got a great Instagram as well. I don't think you're on YouTube, right? Are you? I am on YouTube. Oh, you are on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, I'll link your channel below. And your Instagram and your course and this and everything you have. And everybody go check out Devon and give this video a big thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-person podcast. I love doing them in person. I feel like there's so much more connection than over the computer. So I think it worked out great. And make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Peace. <laughs>